Well, Donald Trump is the only person dismissing the dossier about him as baseless rumor mongering. Russia, which supposedly provided it, has called it an absolute fabrication and an attempt to sabotage U.S. Russia relations. What are their motivations, Russia's, in this latest exchange? We're joined now by Stephen Cohen. He's a contributing editor for The Nation and a professor emeritus of Russian studies at NYU. Professor, thanks for joining us tonight. I'll, I'll confess, I don't know whether this dossier is real or not, but it's making some fairly serious allegations about Trump, allegations really of sedition. What do you make of it? Does it look real to you? Are you talking about the stuff released yesterday about the yes, that's right. sexual and financial blackmail? That's right, that he is basically a pawn in effect of Russia. They're blackmailing him to do well, their bidding. Well, this is, if not the end game, the last chapter in what appears to be an attempt to destroy Trump's presidency before he gets to the White House. As for that document published in BuzzFeed or whatever, uh, I've seen stuff like that before in Moscow. It's junk. Uh, you send me to Moscow and I could get you a better dossier than that. It wouldn't even have the factual errors in it. It's scuttlebutt. It's rumor. It's generated by so-called private intelligence agents who are out to make a buck. They'll sell it to anybody. But the question is, is what is it doing in our political discourse? What are the motives? I mean, why'd CNN put it on the air? Why is, it, is the FBI and the CIA even touching this stuff? Something's going on. I mean, I've been doing this, studying Russia as a professor, and sometimes even on the inside for more than 40 years. I have never seen anything like this. People huh. in the mainstream media, authoritative media, places like the New York Times, are calling Trump a puppet of the Kremlin. They're wounding him mortally as a national security president before he even gets in the White House. So I ask you, you live in D.C., I guess, what is going on? It's, it's, it's not clear to me, and this stuff comes at you so quickly, and it's, it's so esoteric. I mean, if you're a conventional reporter, you're not an expert on Russia. You don't know. I'm speaking for myself. And it's not... It, it doesn't look real, but then, you know, who knows? But as someone who has studied this for 40 years, this does not have the ring of truth to you. And you think this is, if I'm reading it correctly, part of a much larger effort to disable Trump before he becomes president. Well, it didn't begin with this. It began with the Clinton administration campaign, excuse me, last summer when they decided to run against Trump and Putin instead of Trump and Pence. It got picked up with this so-called three intelligence agency report it was published last week. It's absolutely en empty. Even the New York Times, which is very anti-Trump and anti-Russian, referred to that intelligence report as lacking any evidence whatsoever. So now we get what is essentially tabloid stuff. I can only assume, it's an assumption, that people in this country are desperate to wound Trump for various reasons, and yes. one is to stop any kind of detente or cooperation with Russia. So I would submit to you, Tucker, that without a full debate about that possibility and the policies involved, this, these accusations against Trump have themselves become a grave American national security threat. Thank you for the reality check, Professor. It's hard to know, uh, and I appreciate you coming on and explaining that. Thank you very much.